I'm a big fan of voice assistants and smart speakers, and if you've been watching my channel, you know that I have Amazon Echoes, Sonos One speakers, and even a Google Home Mini sprinkled throughout my house. They come in handy for controlling smart home lights, changing your thermostat temperature settings, adding timers in the kitchen when your hands are full, listening to music and the latest news, and much more. But they can also be a little frustrating since you always have to ask for something that can be done faster another way. Say hello to the Google Home Hub. Amazon has been releasing Home Assistant devices with screens for some time now, like the Echo Show, Echo Spot, and Echo Look. But the inclusion of a camera on those devices has given me pause. It's not to say that a camera on something like that is bad, but I wouldn't want something like that in my bedroom or even my kitchen. Google nailed a few key design decisions around the Google Home Hub that piqued my interest and got me to jump in and try it out. First, there's no camera on the device. You can make audio calls like you can on all these types of devices, but the lack of a camera removes a little bit of the creepy factor. Second is the size. It sits in between the Echo Spot and Echo Show for size and strikes what I think is the perfect proportion to fit almost anywhere. I could see this on a nightstand in a bedroom, a desk in a home office, or like I do right now, on the counter in my kitchen. Third is the screen and the user interface. I'll dive into this a little bit more later, but this little seven inch screen is gorgeous, bright, and has a pretty intuitive user interface design. Google's really starting to find their voice when it comes to their hardware design from their phones to their computers and now their home devices. If I had to choose a word to describe their design aesthetic, it would be friendly. They tend to choose bright and light colors, integrate mixture of materials like plastics and fabrics, and they try to soften the hardware with smooth bevels and rounded corners. On their phones, it makes them very tactile and feel good in the hand. With Google Home Hub, it looks like something that belongs in a home. They come in a variety of colors, and the one I have is called Chalk, and it has a really nice fabric wrapped around the base that gives the screen a floating look. As you can see, it blends in perfectly with my kitchen colors and doesn't scream, I'm a piece of technology. Going with the seven inch display was another perfect choice in my book. It's large enough to be seen from across the room, but small enough to tuck away and easily not take up a lot of table and countertop space. And speaking of the seven inch screen, it's incredible. It's sharp and it gets very, very bright. It has a built-in ambient light sensor that adjusts the brightness and color temperature based on the room and time of day, which means that photos and images always look great. And even with the light flooding into my kitchen in the middle of the day, I've never had any issues reading the text on the screen. As I mentioned, there's no video camera built into the Home Hub, but it is an always listening device. So if you ever want privacy, there's a little hardware switch on the top back section of the screen. The UI is also really well designed too. My one major nitpick, and this is true for not just this device, but for all touchscreen devices, is that some of the screens and gestures aren't discoverable. There aren't good visual indicators that there's something off the top of the screen or off the bottom of the screen. However, the setup process includes a decent tutorial that shows you how to access all those additional features. When the Home Hub is in ambient mode and displaying photos, swipe from the right side of the screen to advance to the next photo. Tap anywhere and it will show you the overview screen, which includes the date, weather, and upcoming events from your calendar. Swipe the cards to the left and you'll see more suggestions for you based on how you use Google products, like suggest YouTube videos to watch. Swipe down from the top of the screen to access smart home controls and swipe up from the bottom to adjust brightness, volume, turn on do not disturb, set an alarm, or go to settings. There are also physical volume buttons behind the right side of the screen, which I applaud Google for including and not relying completely on touch screen or voice controls for. As you interact with cards like a calendar event, Google has included buttons for suggested actions along the bottom of the screen. This is one of the pitfalls of a purely voice activated home assistant and discoverability, because with visual indicators, you can learn what else you can do with it. It's a very nice onboarding experience. And finally, I'm happy with the design choices Google made around the display itself. You can control how quickly the screen will go into ambient mode, the threshold for light for how quickly it turns the screen off at night, and even blank the screen after five minutes of inactivity. You can custom tailor your experience around what's displayed, when, and for how long. Again, I tip my hat to Google for a good job there. So why would you want something like this? Well, strap yourself in because there's a lot of cool things this can do. This won't be a surprise, but it can do everything a Google Assistant device can do, including Chromecast with some limitations. For instance, from my iPad, I can sling video from the CBS or HBO app to the Home Hub, which works great. However, I can't sling video from Netflix yet because Netflix has to update their app to support the Home Hub specifically. So while slinging audio via Chromecast works pretty well across the board from what I've tested, slinging video isn't broadly supported yet. I'd expect that to change over time though. 
The Home Hub has Bluetooth so you can easily stream any audio source through the Hub's speakers. It's pretty simple to get your phone or tablet paired with any Google Assistant device like this because all you have to say is, hey, pair your device and then go to your phone settings and link it up. But that does lead me to the speakers on the Hub itself, which are adequate at best. It does sound better than the Google Home Mini speakers and can be easily heard throughout a decent sized room, but I would not call this room filling sound. There's no real low end to the audio at all, and the high end can get very shrill at louder listening levels. I wouldn't look at this as a Google Home Max, Apple HomePod, or Sonos One replacement. That's not what it's designed for. Google Assistant is probably the most capable voice assistant out there. It does the best job recognizing natural language and figuring out what you've asked for without having to phrase the question in a very specific way. I love Amazon because it just works and it works with virtually every third party service that's out there, but you need to phrase things just right or Amazon gets very confused. Google Assistant isn't perfect, but does a much better job puzzling out what your intentions are in comparison to Amazon. On the Home Hub, this is no different. It only has two far field microphones, but they've done a surprisingly good job hearing me anywhere in the kitchen, even with video or audio playing. Another amazing feature which takes advantage of the great screen is photos. When you aren't actively using the Home Hub, it goes into what it calls ambient mode, where you can customize what you want it to display here. It could be a giant clock, or what I assume most people will actually do is display photos. It links to your Google Photos account and can easily display photos from any album that you choose. I won't dive into details on Google Photos, but you can have a smart folder that automatically adds photos of people and pets when it recognizes their faces. Or you can create a shared album and let friends and family add to it whenever they want. It's hard not to get a smile on your face when you see some of your favorite photos fade in and out on the Home Hub. And on that screen, they look great. When using a home assistant, the added visuals have also been a really nice addition. Set a timer and you not only get the audio cues for that timer, but you get a nice visual of that timer, even multiple timers, which comes in really handy when cooking. The same is true if you're asking for the weather report. Currently You'll get a nice visual to help reinforce the day and week at a glance. And if you have a home hub in the kitchen like I do, it's really handy for recipes. Just ask, show me a recipe for sesame chicken. It'll bring up some options for various recipes, select the one you want and tap start cooking. It'll walk through the ingredients, and then step by step through the recipe. And all you have to do is call out next step. Then comes smart home integration, which is one of the areas where the Home Hub really shines. There have been smart home systems with central touch screens that control everything for years, but they typically are part of a custom installation and cost a lot of money. This gives you the same exact functionality at a price that the average consumer can afford. If you swipe down from the top of the screen, it will pull down the Smart Home Control Overview, which shows category icons for media, broadcast, thermostats, cameras, and locks. And depending on what room you keep your home hub in, it will display kitchen lights on and off buttons. It's super handy. Integrations with Netgear Arlo allow you to pull up live video streams from any of those cameras. Have a Nest doorbell, you can see who's at the door when the doorbell rings or even speak to them. Sadly, but not surprisingly, Ring doorbells and cameras do not work with the Google Home Hub which is probably because Amazon doesn't want to support a competing platform. If you'd like functionality with Ring specifically, your only option right now is to use Amazon Echo devices. On my system, I'm able to control the front door's August Smart Door Lock, Arlo cameras, and every light in the house, which includes Philips Hue and Lutron Caseta. I haven't had a need to use this functionality because my home hub is right around the corner from my EKB thermostat, but the home hub even has a nice UI for setting temperature and changing thermostat modes. If you have a Logic Harmony Elite or a Companion, you can also control your entertainment system through voice and on-screen commands. Just ask Google to start your Apple TV and you can play, pause, and control the volume either through further voice commands or through the on-screen controls. Not everyone needs or wants a voice assistant sitting around your house listening all the time. Well, with this, you can turn that functionality off with the flip of a switch. Don't want prying eyes watching you? No problem, there's no onboard camera. The Google Home Hub is surprisingly adaptable to however you want to use it, and it does so at an incredible price. There are digital photo frames that you can buy that cost almost as much as this and don't have a screen that looks this good. Just as a high quality Wi-Fi enabled photo frame, the Home Hub hits the mark. It's a truly impressive little device that I'd be comfortable putting into non-techies homes like my parents or my in-laws. Bundle the photo feature with music streaming, Google Assistant, and smart home controls, and it becomes a real value. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment below if you have a Google Home Hub or something like an Amazon Echo Show and what you think of them, or if you have some integrations that you think others might find useful. 
I've included links to everything in the description, as well as some Amazon affiliate links to a few of them. Definitely not required, but using those links, if you're thinking of buying one of them, helps to support the channel and doesn't cost you anything extra. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.